welcome to the February uh, question and answers wiki tree for um, new members. So the question was um, how to add Quaker project and Quaker sticker. And so it turns out it's not a category, it's a template. And um, Pamela, do you have the WikiTree browser extension installed? I do. Okay. So let me back up here and show you how you get to there. So I'm editing my own profile and you can see here templates, categories, biography. You see all that? Yes. Okay. And do you have this part enabled in your browser extension? I, I'm not sure. Okay. So, um, so, so this is, this is something that comes in the browser extension. And if you don't have this enabled, uh, you can tell, tell me a little bit later and I'll go look through the browser extension to see which option it is you need to enable. But basically okay. you get this mini menu in here and you, so you select add any template and then you start typing in Quaker. So you can add the Quaker project. So let's select that. And it's going to ask whether there's any needs and it, it doesn't have any needs. So you're just saying Quaker's project. Okay. And I, so I, so I think that's not the one that you want. Let's get rid of that. And we'll add any template again. Quaker. Now this is the Quaker. This is the Quaker sticker. So we're going to select that. And it wants to know, um, I don't know what it wants in the ad info or living, because I'm not familiar with this template. Uh, it wants to know click. what, sorry? Uh, I was going to say, click the question mark that might tell you what that field is. No. It's not activating? No. So uh, living mm -hmm. wants yes or no. So it is, is the person living or not? And um, it seems to not want the location. So we're going to say, uh, well, in, in my case, I am living. So, okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to add that. Um, and so there's the Quaker sticker. And now if I do a preview, where did it add the Quaker sticker? At the top somewhere further. At the very top. Further up, I think. Oh, right there. Oh. So it put, it put it right at the top now. So if I wanted it to be where it really belongs, I would move down here and put it just below the biography. And then I'll preview that again. Yeah, and there it is, right, right, to, right below the biography heading. Okay. So is that the one you were looking for? That is the sticker, and but I was wondering how do you how do you see the project, the Quakers project? Okay, let's go. Just, right. let's, let's go figure that out. So let me get out of here. So when you've made changes that you don't want. You go to delete draft and return to profile without saving. Love that one. Mm. So the draft has been deleted and there's nothing there. So now you want to find the Quaker project. So what I need to do is get that out of my way. And we're going to find a project. Where are the projects? There they are. Yeah, projects, yeah. Find projects. And I should be know, there. just going to do a search. Whoops. Probably under the United States. No, because there's Quakers religion. across the world. <laughs> there's Quakers in England and Wales. <laughs> ah. Um, okay, just a minute. So what? So go to religion. Quaker friends and there's a Quakers project within that yeah okay we'll get the URL for that and we will go to the chat and there you go there is the URL for the Quaker project okay thank you you're welcome and now I can stop sharing. All right. so. The other way, of course, is if you don't know how to get to it through the projects page, you can go to search, 
and you can type in, you know, Quaker project, Quakers project, it should pull it up as one of the first options. Because again, it's, it's using a, a Google search externally to look at all of our pages that way. So, so that's an alternative way you can pull it up. Okay. It may be quicker for you. Did you, did you have another question, Pamela? Um, let's see. I, I'll say, I, I, as I said, I've been um, listening to some of the Saturday roundups and often they say the word biscuits and I can't figure out why they're saying biscuits. Could somebody please tell me why? <laughs> um, so, so apparently um, uh, biscuits are very popular among Appalachians. Oh. And, and um, I guess they're a, a reward of, of, of something. So, so apparently biscuits is an exclamation of Appalachians. Um, and, and I guess unless you're an Appalachian, you don't really get it, but <laughs> that's my understanding of things. Um, biscuits are a reward. Uh, biscuits okay. are a good, good thing. People are happy to get biscuits. Um, but beyond that, I, I, I really don't know. You'd have to ask an Appalachian. And I think that would be a question to raise um, on the Saturday roundup. And, and Mags will be uh, quite expansive in answering you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, my last question has to do with the profile improvement project. I signed up for the voyage um, in January, and I was wondering how long it takes to, you know, generally um, get your mentor in that project. I don't know. I don't... I'm not part of it. That I don't know if either of you, either Steve or Murray, are part of that one. I'm part. I'm one of the project coordinators for the England project Orphan Trail. Um, and I know we have quite a long waiting list on ours, and I don't know how many mentors they have on the voyage, but I suspect like we have in the England project, you there is probably a waiting time. Um, mm -hmm. The best thing to do would be, you prob if you've joined, you've probably contacted somebody, is to contact yes. whoever you, you con whoever it was that you signed you up to go do the voyage, contact them. But don't be surprised if you have a little bit of a wait because there's only a few, there's only a certain number of people that are able to do the men to be the, um, the mentors. And um, obviously they, you know, if, if they've got somebody that is needing a lot of help, then there's, it's going to be slower progress before they can take on another person. So, yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Good. That's all my questions. Right. Does anybody else have any questions? I would like you to look at a couple of profiles if you have time, please. Yeah, have you got um, the the um, profile IDs? It's uh, Bartlett, 8751. Bart Bartlett? Yes, B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T. -T. Seven... What was the number again? Eight, eight seven five one. Eight seven five one. Sorry, I missed that. Bartley eight seven five one. Bartlett, I think. It's all right. Bartley, I typed it in, but I didn't. I mistyped it. Billy -E T T. I'm not finding anything. I've got it. I've got it. I think Lucianne Bartlett Stone. Does that yes, sound right? That's, correct. that's it. Right. Um, I'll screen share then, and we can, and then we can uh, see. I I did some um I did some work on that recently, and unfortunately, I duplicated a another profile. I thought I was being careful, but. I, I missed it. And somehow, as I entered the information on her profile, I had 
I had created two profiles for the same person. I have no idea how I did that, but it, <laughs> it was obvious that they needed to be merged. And when I did that, <clears throat> um, the original uh, profile went away. I didn't lose it, the, or the information that was on it because I had copied it. But unfortunately, the, the profile manager's name um, went away and I became the profile manager. In this particular case, um, the original profile manager is now deceased. But I I was uncomfortable about that because that was that was not my intent, and I'm not sure how or what I did to cause the original information to go away. Hmm. Uh, I, any I ideas? Yeah, I suspect with with um when you merge profiles. If you got if you have a duplicate and when it and when it uh, you do when you press to merge, um, you you usually merge into the original profile, the lower numbered one. And I suspect you had it the other way round. But if that other profile manager was deceased and therefore they didn't have a, a, a perhaps it perhaps been orphaned and they didn't have a profile manager after all, that they it possibly just automatically went through. That's my that's my thought. Unless Murray or Steve's got any other ideas. Well, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the change log. Oh. Um, so I can see the I can see the information that got lost. Um, and I've copied it. And, and, and how how or where do you see that? Well, I, oh, it, I see. Well, I'll show you where the change, changes, the changes. And, and, and track it that way. Yeah, this is the changes. So if you, you click on okay. that changes button, you'll see what see what's changed on the profile at the various times and who's changed it. And you can go to each like so this person edited the biography at that time. So if I click there, it 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 then shows me what was changed. Well, all that was changed at that time was they added a category on, but um, sometimes they can add a lot more than that. Where is the merge? Let's have a look. Let's go back to her. Yeah. When did the merge happen? Oops. Oops. I've gone to the wrong. Oh, no. How long ago was the merge, Barbara? I I'm not sure. Uh, I've my uh, my merge. I'll I'll say. Um, maybe doesn't, mm, doesn't maybe look like go go down a little bit. It was ten February. Uh, okay. okay, okay, that sounds right. That's right. Merge. That sounds Merge. right. And okay. and my my formatting was not good, and I knew that. But okay, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, 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 Shirley Dalton was the creator and was the original profile manager but she's she's now gone so i guess it's okay that i'm the current profile manager and and she is a relative she's a, a descendant of one of my direct ancestors but uh, but i didn't intend to do that I, uh, my, my um, work was much more recent than uh, 2018. And, and when I did the merge, it did go back to the first uh, profile number, but I didn't expect that, that, um, Shirley Dalton as the profile manager would would disappear. 
mm. or that some of the information that she had included would disappear. Mm. And I don't know what I did to cause that. But the good thing is, as a wiki, we can go back to this data and we can see exactly what was changed or removed. So if we want to add it back in, we could possibly still do that. Mm. Because we can see can the go, original. Yeah, because I can show that this is how it was created. Yeah. That was originally created there. So if there's anything that's not on the profile now that was that was on there before that you want to keep, then you can go back and you can just copy that bit and put it put it back into the profile. Because okay. you might have changed something else that you don't want to change. So you could just copy out what right. what what there is on there. That's how the that's how the profile was originally set up. Right. Okay. And okay. it's going to happen. People will pass away. Their profiles mm -hmm. will fall either into being orphans or someone else will pick up after them. So it's just the natural order of, you know, being on a, a long project like this, that people are not going to be around. So someone else will fill in after they're, they're, they're gone. Okay. Okay. So you, you think it's because Shirley Dalton was deceased that my uh, name came up well, there as the yeah, profile manager. She can't, control, she can't control a profile if she's deceased because she can't respond right. to messages. Right. She, she can't do anything. So she is now with the rest of the deceased profiles. Yeah, mm -hmm. except, except that I, I was surprised that that happened and I didn't know why or what I had done. It's not and, a common situation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and because the um, profile, as I had shown it, um, the formatting was was not good, but I didn't know how to fix it. Okay. And somebody fixed it, but I don't know what they did uh, to uh, to make it right. Um, um, so I when 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 that happens, I can see what somebody has done, but I don't know the process to fix what I had done incorrectly and formatting. And then again, those are things that could be visualized in the changes log, but it, it's probably wiki markup that was used to do the formatting or the arrangement of things on the profile. So it, it does have a little bit of a, you know, steeper learning curve if you're not familiar with that type of, you know, markup language. But I mean, always ask for help because a lot of us have been doing this for a long time and, you know, uh, that's that's what the whole point of the community is, is that you don't have to do everything yourself. It's collaborative, right? So yeah. I, 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 I understand. I want to learn to do it correctly. Of course. But if I, if I don't know what's been done to correct it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I could share a link to, uh, Betsy has a page for Wiki Markup. So those are things that we use to bold and underline and, and create links. So I, I can go ahead and find that right now and share that in the, the chat. Um, yeah, when we, when we unless finish, Murray, maybe, you already have access to it. <laughs> yeah. When we finish, maybe you'd want to go back to the um, and have a look at that profile and look at the changes and have a look, see what the differences are between when you left it and what other people have done since. Okay, that, okay. that might help you okay. to understand what was what was not quite right on the profile. Okay, so if I go back to my change, it will still show me how it looked at that time i guess yeah, i have not realized that yeah if you go back to the if you go to that profile click on the changes and it will show you any change that's been made and saved it will show you what's happened and it'll okay. show you what's different from the previously prior to that change being made so you can oh. see if something's been removed or something's been altered on the profile it will show you that what alterations have been made. Okay, yeah. can, can you uh, show those side by side somehow? 
Um, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll share again because I've still got it on my screen. I'll share that that screen and show you what I mean. Thank you. Right. So I've gone to the changes button, which has gone yellow. And so the last time that you made any edit was on the, uh, was this one. So after that, somebody else edited the biography. They've said they've added some categories. So if I click on edited the biography, you'll be able to see that was when you last edited it on the 10th of February. That's how it was. They've added above the biography, they added category, Highland Cemetery, Newcastle, Colorado. And that's the first thing they did. Then okay. the next change after that, will show that another category was added and so, and two one name studies were added for the surnames of Bartlett and Stone, which are which are the surnames on her profile. And otherwise they they seem to be pretty much the same. Everything else was the same as what it had been. And then the, then if you click the next change it will show you that all right, okay. Right. Somebody's put in some reference tags there, but they haven't put anything in between the reference tags. They've put some research notes in and, and uh, that's been added. Okay, I, I did the research notes. Yeah, yeah. And this was put, this research notes was put on okay. there. I did that. Yeah. It's just it's just been moved, so you've got actually got a research notes section there, which should be two equals signs, not three. Mm. Yeah. A research notes. Mm. Uh, it it looked like three equal signs for research notes. Is that right? Um, it 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 that's what it is there, but it should be two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just you shared put two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It usually comes up and warns you if you've got the browser. I think it's a browser extension. If you've got that on, it usually comes up and warns you in the big yellow box if you've got the wrong, some of the wrong, the formatting wrong. It, it was, it was. If it, if it's got three, three equal signs either side, that means it's a subsection. And sometimes it will say it's a subsection when it should be a section, which is just the two equal signs either side. And sometimes well, vice versa. I don't understand <laughs> what they're telling me when they uh, when they say it's an error. Mm. I know yeah. it's an error, but but I'm not sure what to do to fix it. Sometimes. Yeah. So I just shared a link. Uh, Betsy has a sub page that says useful tips for wiki code. That's what she's calling wiki markup, and also site sort um, this sort sorry citing sources. <laughs> um, so if you go ahead and click on that, that might break down some of the things that you're encountering and you can understand what they do. Like, so that's, that's kind of a cheat sheet that we have available. Uh, that also links off of the, uh, the Q and a page that you would have clicked the link on to get here. Um, so that, that can be accessed through that. I just finally found it. <laughs> yeah. The next bit looked like somebody's actually collect, corrected the research notes and removed these two equal signs that shouldn't be there. And they've made it into the correct with the correct formatting. Right, they made it the same size as the biography section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The biography section has two. And if you want to go smaller, then you go three, then you go four. Yeah. It's easy done to put the wrong one on. I've I've done that on a load of profiles and then I have to go back and amend them when I came across them again. So it's easy done. Just takes practice. Yeah, yeah. And and they've just added something in into that bit there, which that so all this bit that's highlighted in red looks like it's looks like it's just been added in. Whoever edited that one, Judith, has added that, and that was the end of all the contributions on that one. So I'll stop sharing. But um, and again, if something was removed, it would have a strike through it, correct? Yeah, yeah, uh, I think they. I think if it's removed completely, it, it, you can tell that the, it's no longer in the biography. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
does that help answer some questions for you, Barbara? Uh, yes, thank you. And and then um, I have another profile sure. that I would appreciate it if you could look at if you have time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have you got the ID? Barbara? Uh, it's Adams six seven six five eight. Was that six six five eight? Six uh, seven six five eight. David Albert Adams. Yes. Okay. And Chicago. Yeah. Um, right now. Uh, Stephen, would you take that ID into the chat? Oh yeah, no problem. Sorry. Let's do that really quick. Where did my chat go? <laughs> I lost it. Sometimes I don't even know how to use this program. That's great. No, don't do that. Oh, there it is. It's in more. And that's what I was hiding. Mm. Okay, so there is the link to Adam six or yeah, six seven six five eight. Yes. It looks like a nice profile. Uh, and he's connected into the tree. Uh, yes. Um, I I made a note on it on it yesterday. I changed his year of birth, um, and my explanation for for changing it was that I now have a. Uh, the uh, pension application record from the National Archives for his father, James Adams. And on James' affidavit and support of his pension application, he gave the birth dates of his children. And, and so I relied on what James said rather than any other information we have. And and is is that appropriate? Uh, assuming that the the statement of a parent would be more likely to be correct than something on find a grave and they're already uh, uh, and uh, Betsy was was helping with that some time ago um, and and which she pointed out that some of the information on find a grave could not be correct uh, and <laughs> yes. mm. yeah. And Definitely. and we've and we've mm -hmm. found that and other instances where uh, the information on find a grave is is not really correct. And what I cited was simply the pension application um, by James Adams, the father. Is that sufficient? It's a sufficient source. Uh, do you have a link to the document in the National Archives, or is it something that's physically held somewhere? Like, is there a digital version of it that we can link to? Uh, well, maybe so. I I have I have the copy of the uh, of the pension application. Okay. So you have it physically in your hand. Yes. Okay. So that, that might be good to clarify is that you personally possess it okay. uh, as, as a source. So that, that's better than just saying, you know, here's pension file. Where did it come from? Okay. I, yeah. I, I referenced the, I, I didn't see the profile come up, but I, I referenced the, uh, I, I think I referenced the uh, uh, pension uh, record numbers and refer to the National Archives. Um, but I can add that I have yeah. that copy. 
Yeah, yeah. Any additional information, just to clarify that you are effectively the source for this because you have the document in your hand. Um, the other thing about, you know, find a grave, it is not accurate for a lot of information. So I don't use it as a source unless I'm referencing the burial location because the burial location is something that can be verified. But if you're talking about birth, death, any of that stuff, a lot of those stones don't even tentatively are correct sometimes because it's a secondhand person that provided the information when the person was deceased. Right. Um, so right. you want to go with a very, you know, fine grain of salt uh, when you're dealing with find a grave. Very, you know, take it with a very fine grain of salt because, um, the, the, yeah, a lot of that data isn't sourced on their own site. Like they don't actually indicate what the sources are for the death dates and the birth dates that they put on there. So, so you use them as breadcrumbs or, or you know, cookie crumbs. Yeah. We well, can see uh, from this find a grave one that it's totally wrong because they put right. a birth date in 1865 when the stone that they they that they ref that they've got their a photo of says that the person was born 1857, which is a completely different year. <laughs> way out so it may not even be for the same person and the name's different and everything so you really do like as you say Stephen need to look at these things properly I'm I'm I I will only use um find a grave if I'm I know it's definitely um it, and as you say for the for the burial or I or I know that I I know that that the person that's there is the is the same person but usually I use it alongside other other references right. Or in this case, it's in research notes because it's giving data that someone else might try to say is true. And we're basically telling them, no, it's not. And here are the reasons why. So we're trying to clean up the mess that's been taken uh, for granted in other parts of, you know, the research world. They'll look at the final grave and they'll assume it's correct. Uh, right. And, and uh, Betsy had pointed out also and the information that that she included when we were looking at this profile uh, previously that uh, David's uh, date of birth varied slightly from the date of birth somewhere else for his twin sister. So, uh, and uh, James is saying that, that David and Alice were born March 1st, 1866. And that's, that's, I think that's probably at least as accurate as anything else that, that we most, have at this point. It's the most accurate source that you have. Yeah, and it's probably recorded the closest to when the uh, event happened as well. He's, he's probably, you know, if, if, if it's only a few years after he, the children were born or, or when they were still living with, their, with his parents, and the chances are they've got the right date. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I want to prevent happening again is duplicating a profile. Now, David Adams is the son of Nancy Shannon Bartlett Adams from her second marriage to James Adams. And on uh, James Bartlett and Nancy's profile, children are listed and on, on Nancy's profile, David and his siblings, at least one other sibling, are listed on Nancy's profile. James Adams has a profile um, and uh, his, but the children are not listed uh, on James' profile, and I, I don't want to duplicate anything. So if I, if I look at, if, if on David Adams' profile, if I click on father, and then the option is new or existing, and James Adams is an existing profile. Yep. Then would would that would that be what I want to accomplish? Yes, yeah. it is. Mm. Yeah. 
you just need his ID, which is which on his is profile of, of this. Like seven, if, you, if you're in, if you're in yeah, if you're in Dave in, in the child's, if you get the ID of the father that you want to add, and then go to add the father, yes. that's all you'll I... need when to to match up with when it says it's got an existing profile oh. is the ID of Sorry. the existing profile. <laughs> Because you've, if you've got a few children to add, it's sometimes easier adding it from the child to the father from the child to make sure you've got them all. And and then for for the other siblings, there's there's one sibling. Okay, here's here's David's profile, and there's there's one. Um, other sibling already listed in Nancy's profile, a couple other uh, of her children with James Adams are not. So, shall I go ahead and add him? There it is. Yeah. Father, would you like the father added, Barbara? Uh, which, uh, James. Um, yes. James Adams is six seven seven two seven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and add him. We're gonna go ahead and add him, not Adam. Um, Adam. Adam. <laughs> right. So now, so now you have uh, James Adam listed as the father of David Albert. Uh, go ahead and click the ancestor button too. This will be cool to visualize. Yes, and his his twin sister is. Alice Adams, so she should be included too. Um, that, that was shown as one of these. Oh boy, um, I think I saw the person there in the list. But yeah, we'll go back. Alice is um, three seven four three nine. Oh, did did it open up a new page, a new tab? So that's the Alzira Alice? Alzira, yeah. Alice yeah. Adams, yes. Well, they're all coming up as half children. Yeah, that's because they've only got the mother attached rather than both parents, isn't it? The, the, oh, she doesn't have a father. Okay, just a second. Uh, right, her father okay. is James Adams. Oh, there. Yes. There. And we will edit. And add father put in an id and connect to an existing profile Love and... that. no that right? you grabbed hers instead oh all right so sorry what do i what number do i want james james is six seven seven two seven six seven seven two seven yes that's him yep there we go and it's i love that little preview that comes out yeah, it lets you know yeah. that you got the right one in there. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. She's connected to him now. Yeah. And so for any of these other children that are say half, if they're also um James's children, you can do the same thing with them as we've done with the with um David, Albert, and Alice Azira, add add them on and and um or Alzira Alice, sorry. Um, add them on as as some um, children of James because they're probably all at the moment got just the mother attached. But if they're not all his children, if she's got if she's had two husbands and some of one from one and some from another, then obviously you need to just make sure they're on. They've got the right father. Well, yeah, the ones with different names. The Bartlets would be a different father then. Yes. Yeah. The Bartlets are yeah, father right. by James mm. Bartlett, and uh, they seem to be okay. Mm. And and then uh, there are two more children for uh, James Adams and Nancy Shannon, and so when I when I add those, in order not to duplicate anything, where's the best place to to add them? Uh, you can add them to under as as a child of one of the parents. And then it'll ask you okay. if the other parent is the the other connecting parent. You know, you can confirm it or you can say, no, it's not. It's actually somebody else. 
when it gets to that point. Um, do you have Sorcerer, Barbara? Oh, I love Sorcerer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let me show you, let me show you a trick with Sorcerer. So if you go to Sorcerer and you do search WikiTree from the profile that you're on, okay, it'll go and it'll look for everybody that matches the name Alzira Adams. <gasps> oh on that date and, and and in fact it's kind of weird it didn't find anybody mm. so that didn't work as well as i was hoping <laughs> it doesn't always work for some it reason didn't, <laughs> it didn't find alzira adams who is the one that i searched off of mm. which it didn't weird. find a duplicate yeah it didn't find a duplicate so but th mm. yeah that's that's kind of the point it didn't find a duplicate so you know, so when when you're in the process of adding someone, you can while you're in the add person screen, you can go up to your sorcerer icon and have it search WikiTree, and it'll use all the data that you've entered, and and to form the search, and it'll show you if you've got any any um, any comparable profiles. Well, that'll happen naturally too without using sorcerer, right? Because if you give it information to create a person's profile it'll then say okay well here's some matches can you confirm if this is the person or you know because it, it'll actually point out hey same birth year same death year yeah. um right. and i've had to like had a, a couple of rejected matches because they were really close so i had yeah. to select those mm. i like sort of better <laughs> but every everybody has a different way of doing it i know i know i like them both ways well i i try to be careful about not duplicating, but I made a mistake. And, we all, and we I, all do that. I <laughs> had difficulty. Yeah, we all do. Uh, you don't have to agree. <laughs> Sometimes there's just not enough information there. And so you, you create a new one because you haven't got enough information. And then um, you come along later and you put, put some more information in and, it or, and you check and it's, there's somebody else there. But sometimes it just depends how somebody's entered the information. And you know, Barbara, it, it's funny um, how how many people make duplicates. So so you know, I I was doing some some testing the other day and and you know writing up about duplicates and stuff like that. And I found I was you know I I just did a random search for Albert Einstein, and I found that somebody had created a duplicate for Albert Einstein. And right. how did they how did they manage to do that? Like how did it happen? that they didn't think Albert Einstein was already in WikiTree, right? He should be <laughs> Einstein one. He would have been the first Einstein created. I, I, I imagine, I can't remember now, but but yeah, yeah, there was a duplicate and it was like, well, this is weird, but you know, it happens. It happens because people take, sometimes create a profile from a, a census record and they'll just have a year and then somebody else will come along and they'll have the information from the birth record which might be a year or two different mm -hmm. and then so because it's not exactly and maybe you haven't got enough information there you'll create that and then you'll realize later oh because they're connected to somebody else that that you've got a duplicate so it does happen quite quite a lot <laughs> or like me at midnight when i think that i've <laughs> haven't created this profile and then i end up you know doing things twice because i don't have enough sleep uh so <laughs> don't drive and, and wiki tree while tired <laughs> um now barbara back to the back to the question of merges so let me make a suggestion to you when you do a merge um when you perform merge it it asks you near near the bottom of the form it asks you whether you want to um to have just the the text from the profile from one profile just the text from the other profile or a merge of the two and my recommendation unless you know for sure that that one profile is perfect and the other one is is no good you should always ask for a merge of the two now another trick i'd like to suggest to you um you know usually before i do a merge on an important profile i will look at both the profiles i'll do the comparisons and then I will find, I will go to the one that is the lowest number and I will make sure that it has all of the information that it should have. So that when I do the merge, I just select the one that has the right information. Okay. 
So if, if you're not sure how you're going to edit it, then merge them and merge all the data into it and then go do a cleanup afterwards. If you know for sure, like you've spent some time and you've cleaned up the one profile and now you just want to get rid of the other one, then you can say merge these and select only the text from this one. Maybe, maybe that was my mistake. Maybe I didn't click merge both of the uh, two because actually yeah. at that point I had three because I had accidentally and I'm not sure how I did that but suddenly I realized that I had created uh two profiles for the same for uh, for the same yeah. person yeah uh, and and so when and it was about that point when I realized what I had done, that suddenly the earlier profile showed up and then I had three. And, and so I, I just, I, I didn't know what I was doing actually. That's okay. It's okay. Don't, because again, I'll look through it. Hmm. Well, um, I have I have one other question, and it's about uh, James Bartlett, and it's Bartlett four five seven one, uh, and I am not the profile manager for James Bartlett, but I am a direct descendant, and always uh, until I recently. Uh, received the pension application for uh, James and Nancy Adams, Nancy being James Bartlett's first wife. We had always thought, anybody who was researching James Bartlett had always thought that he probably died in 1863. Nancy's affidavits and support of her pension application for James Adams pension says that James died. She had, uh, there's a conflict. And one affidavit, she says it was January. And in one, she says it was February. Uh, but in any event, it was 1862 and in Champaign County, Illinois. I've searched for many years to find some death record for James Bartlett without success. And this is the best information that I think we have now with Nancy's affidavit and what she says that her first husband died on these dates and in this place. I emailed Anita Riley, who is the profile manager, and said that I have this new information and would like to change it, but she hasn't responded. And so my question now, is it okay for me to simply go ahead and change the date and place of James Bartlett's death and in my research notes say why I'm changing it and my source, which is the, the uh, pension applications. It, it's, I think because it's an open profile and you've got a source to indicate why you've changed something. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, this the 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 profile manager has not been that active for almost a year, um, so we don't know whether that profile manager is, is still is still around to, a, to if they've not responded to you. So it's not like it's it's as long as you've got a good source to go with it, then I don't see why you shouldn't um, um, edit one that's that's open like that. Well, I I think. The, uh, the pension applications, which I, I just acquired recently, are probably the most reliable source that we have 
prior to that, the assumption was that he had died in 1863 because there were probate records for his children in 1864. And, and so um, the assumption was he probably died the previous year. But Nancy says he died in 1862 when I, and those are affidavits. Um, and, and I think, I, I think probably that's as close as we can get. Yes, I, it's a first-hand attestation, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, she will have done. She will have attested to that either at, at, on the, on a particular date, which you've got on that affidavit, presumably. So. Yeah, you you've got all the evidence. You mm -hmm. reasonable to make that change. Yeah, and, and there was no response from the profile manager who has been inactive for over a year. It's an open profile, so you're welcome to add that. Of course, you know, go in the research notes and explain why you're making those changes as well, because it is a, an older profile of a lot of shared, you know, descendants. Um, so, so then when other people come across it in the future, they can see, you know, I had this document. I provided this information because, you know, X because Y. Um, and then there should not be an issue, you know, until another document surfaces, right? That dispels yeah. that one. Yeah, I, I mean, I worked on a um, on some profiles this week for a family, which had all got mixed up on family search, um, and they've been then been added to WikiTree, the same as what they were on family search, but they had the wrong parents on these things, and I had to do a lot of taking people off and put that. But I put all the sources and things on, um, and I actually left a message for the um, profile manager and the profile manager got back to me and said I, you know you, you've got you've got more knowledge on this than me than me I'm pleased that you've they were happy that I did it in fact they actually even gave me a, one, a wonderful wiki tree for it so because I've got all this family sorted out properly and they've got lots of sources and things but I'm more familiar with the area perhaps than that person is or I'm more familiar with you no know, finding the sources so um but there's no reason why you shouldn't uh, alter something that's an open profile if you've got the goods, if you've got sources to support well, the changes, which you have. Because I'm I'm fairly new, I don't want to do anything inappropriate, and so I I did ask, um, but but I I think the information that from the pension records now which is new information to me and years of searching have not turned up any other information about james bartlett's death now how about ann and doris have you guys got any or gals rather you guys got any questions i don't i don't either okay Hopefully you've all found this useful. I always learn something new. And I've been doing genealogy for over 30 years. So I still <laughs> consider myself a newbie. <laughs> I learn new things every day myself. Yeah, I, I, I found there's things that you, oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm do, trying to do a load of wills at the moment. And uh, these are early wills that I'm not familiar with. So, uh, but they uh, give you so much information that, you know, it's worth, learning right yeah i'm just learning and plus i've been using all the youtubes <laughs> mm. sources which i love because because like i never knew about sorcerer and i never knew about extension and it was now it's fantastic i love it <laughs> i love using sorcerer it's fantastic especially using when I'm using a, a, a fan, you know, like the, the sprint fan and so forth, it's, you know, using it fantastic. I love it. And then when I learned that, I, like I said, Murray, like I said, like I went to a profile and I usually go to Ancestry since I have it. And, but most people don't have Ancestry. So what I did was I just go into the list and I go straight to family search and it's right there. So, <laughs> yeah. I love that. So I, I love the way and so forth. And I hope everybody enjoys their time at Roots Tech for any couple of days. <laughs> I'll be virtual. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I'm not yeah, going this year. I've been twice. 
<laughs> Always fun. Mm. What does that okay, basically no wrap everything? No more questions. I'll stop recording. <laughs> okay. Thank you for all the help you've given me today. I appreciate it.